So before, JavaScript was getting a new library or framework pretty much every single day. But now, JavaScript is actually getting a whole runtime every single month. So yes, if you haven't heard already, LRT is the new low latency runtime made by AWS or Amazon. It's actually pretty lightweight and it's meant for faster serverless applications. So as we all know, JavaScript gets a new library released every single day. And now it gets a new runtime every single month. And yesterday, Amazon released a yet another JavaScript runtime along all the JavaScript runtimes you've got, and it's named LRT. Basically stands for Low Latency Runtime. And because we know that the AWS in here, or Amazon, particularly the Amazon Web Services, they own one of the biggest serverless infrastructures in literally in the world, which is Lambda. So they actually designed this, the LRT is meant to actually allow you to run your Java's code inside of Lambdas. And as actually AWS in here is actually claiming that LRT offers up to 10x faster startup and 2x overall lower cost compared to other JavaScript runtimes running on AWS Lambda specifically. So that means using something like Node.js or maybe Bun or Deno, something like that. There's tons of JavaScript runtimes. So if you use one of those instead of like using the LRT in here, basically it's gonna cost you 2x more and it's gonna be 10x slower compared to using LRT. So I believe that's actually a really good thing to start with and it's a really, really nice thing, especially for serverless because all of us, literally all of us like web developers, we absolutely hate serverless because the cold start actually takes forever when it starts without cache or even sometimes the warm start in there actually takes even forever. And we want our APIs to work as smooth as possible, as swift as possible. But now I believe that using LRT, this new low latency runtime released by AWS can actually make that happen eventually. And as on Twitter, Russ Boston here is actually stating how many JavaScript runtimes we have so far, starting with like Node.js, V8 in here, Deno, Bun, Worker D for like Cloudflare workers, the new LRT, we've got Win4JS, Edge Runtime, Lagging in here, which is for cell required, Compute Edge for Fastly and Spider Monkey, Edge Compute Alibaba, uh, Hermes, Facebook, um, we've got like Bloomberg, and ByteDance, and Tixiki, which is based on QuickJS. And here, like the LRT in here is not based on V8, it's actually based on QuickJS. And he made like a correction in here down here. Oh, LRT is using QuickJS, not V8, which is a very small JavaScript engine. And when it comes to benchmarking in here and performance benchmarking, so we've got like two benchmarks between LRT in here, which runs DynamoDB, and it, like, it puts that using ARM and 128 megabytes. And the second one is actually Node.js as well. So Node.js version 20. So for the cool start in here, it actually took like the best case scenario in here. It took like 155 for HTTP and Lambda 48, where, you know, worst case scenario in here, 304 milliseconds. And for the warm start in here, you know, best case 27 milliseconds and worst case is 272 milliseconds. Of course, warm start is just basically with cache. Now, if you look into Node.js in here, now Node.js has a really, really bad cold start in here. It's like one, almost half, a, one and a half a second. And here, like almost three seconds in here. And when it comes to warm start, it's actually pretty decent. It has like only six milliseconds and 27 milliseconds. And here, almost like half a second or more than a half a second. And I think that's actually why that's one of the many reasons why they decided to actually create a new JavaScript runtime instead of just using Node.js because Node.js is meant for like long running tasks like loops and stuff while LRT or like, you know, those kind of like JavaScript runtimes are meant for serverless sort of functions and they run only one thing and they just die is because of like, you know, how long it does it take to store it. And everybody, literally every single developer hates when, you know, a Lambda or a serverless function takes forever to start and start executing the code, then it dies. So apparently when we look into this one, we're looking like, oh, LRT benchmark versus Node.js, I see a lot of potential. And that actually explains the 10X performance boost, LRT in here and Node.js version 20. And of course, LRT is in beta and it's actually still inexperimental. So it's not there just yet. And if we look so far in here for the compatibility matrix in here with the different, you know, Node.js like functions and APIs, we see like LRT in here has a pretty decent support so far as of a beta version in here. It supports buffers, streams in here. Uh, this is actually pending support, child process sockets, uh, server is 
done, TLS, uh, fetch is done, which is pretty good. Like most people are gonna use fetch quite a lot. HTTPS and HTTP are not uh, like still pending uh, for like, you know, support. Uh, promises in here for the file system, promises are good. Um, callback based like file system is not there just yet. And all everything other than that, like literally everything down here from path console, ESM events, um, encoding process, crypto, UID timers, path, yada, 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 all of them are supported. So you're like, you are, I don't know, 70%, 80% good to go with LRT. And yes, the awesome part about this one is actually works with ES build, roll up. Maybe if you're still using Webpack, maybe if you're still in 2018, well, it works for Webpack too, and so many others as well. And literally the awesome part about this one is actually it comes baked in with AWS SDK version three already inside the runtime. So you don't have to go ahead and install all these packages, all these AWS SDK packages from the S3 client, secret manager, Lambda, KMS, all of those are literally already pre-installed or pre-built inside of the LRT JavaScript runtime. So you literally don't have to do any of that. And that's actually comes pre-optimized for you. So this is gonna actually give you a huge performance boost. Now, I actually wanted to benchmark this myself. So I came in here, I just put a very simple script in here, just like a full loop in here. I called the script one.javascript and it brought literally all the runtime. So I bought Node.js, LRT, Amazon LRT, I grabbed Bun and WorkerD in here from Cloudflare. So even though WorkerD is not gonna be able to work because it runs in, in a very specific environment and you have to do a lot of setup. So I'm literally just gonna test these through two or three in here in the top. Of course, the script in here is just a for loop. It's a very simple for loop. And for that one, for the benchmark, I'm going to use this command. I'm going to use hyperfine CLI, which is a really nice like benchmarking tool in that allows you to benchmark different scripts and stuff. And I'm actually warming this up three times to build some cache so it doesn't start from you know a completely cold start. And um, yeah, it got like the first script in here is Node.js, the second one is Bun, and the third one is using LRT. So click enter in here, let's go and spawn and see how good they're actually gonna do. So the first one, uh, Node.js, it took almost 35 millisecond, Bun, 12 millisecond, and Benchmark 3. So if you just know that, Benchmark 3 is five millisecond, like literally even faster than Bun, and, and like literally a lot faster compared to Node.js, and Bun, of course, is, is faster than Node.js. So he tells you in here, the LRT script in here ran two or almost three times faster compared to Bun, and almost seven times faster than Node.js. Now here, it's actually faster because the computation in here is, is like very small. So there isn't a lot of iterations and full LRT is actually how it works. It doesn't actually provide a GIT powered runtime. So like GIT is just, just in time compiler, pretty much is inside of like Node.js and Bun and but most of other like JavaScript runtimes to make it work and you know to make it like a long time sort of running. It's just like something for a performance boost. And because of course JavaScript is interpreted, so it's like just basically getting like allow it to run faster and better. But here, because it doesn't need to learn that, it, because like LRT is just basically meant for serverless, so it just runs one script and it dies. So it's literally not meant for running for a long time in here. So it says it here, it's good for like large data processing. Um, so it's literally telling you in here, oh, it's actually gonna show notable performance drawbacks compared with GIT per runtimes, such as like, oh, large data processing, Monte Carlo simulations, or forming tasks with hundreds of thousands or millions of iterations. And literally in here, millions of iterations or a lot of iterations are bad for LRT and it's gonna actually hurt the performance. And LRT is actually most effective when applied to smaller serverless functions dedicated to tasks such as like data transformation, real-time processing, AWS service integration, authorization, validation, et cetera, et cetera. And in here for our loop in here, because you know we've got a very small loop, so that's actually should be good. But imagine if we increase this and make it like a million, right? So it just goes through a million iterations. I'm gonna save that one and I'm gonna actually just go ahead and clear this. I'm gonna run exactly the same thing, the command again. I mean, if you compare it right now, this is actually LRT, almost 32 or 35 millisecond compared to Node.js, 37 millisecond. So they're very, very close. And Bun is actually a clear winner. So it tells us, oh, Bun run almost three times faster and three times faster compared to Node.js. 
So yes, ORCN here is very, very bad for a lot of iterations and long running tasks. And to be honest, it's not meant for that. It's meant just for serverless to run one task and it's to be done with it. So anyway, guys, thank you for watching. So make sure to go and actually subscribe because we're probably going to have another JavaScript one time, like literally next month. It's actually today is the 10th of uh, February, I guess. So yeah, just subscribe and make, make sure to stay tuned on the next month on March for a new JavaScript one time and we can just go in and do some benchmarking. Anyway, see you guys.